guys, I'm Danny Abram and today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to use Redmine. Uh, Redmine is a web-based software management application. Uh, being web-based, that means that anyone can get to it as long as they have a computer with a browser. Um, during this tutorial, I'm going to be going over eight major uh, scenarios and tasks. So the first that we're going to go over is accessing Redmine page. Uh, the second is create a project in Redmine. Uh, and then we're going to add team members to that project. Add, a, add wiki information for that project, create a task, update the Gantt chart, um, update that task that we created, and then log the entire time. So let's get started. The first thing that um, obviously we want to do is open up a browser. So we're just going to open up Chrome. <clears throat> I'm going to open up a demo Redmine page. Um, as I was saying earlier, because it's web-based, a lot of companies choose to put their Redmine um, suite within their intranet. So as long as you are on the same network that the Redmine is installed on, you can access it. I know a lot of the company I used to work for, they actually had um, their server for Redmine opened up so that you can get to it even outside of the intranet network. So as long as you had the username and password, um, you could access the Redmine page. So <clears throat> here's the home page. You can't really do too much unless you're actually signed in. Once you're signed in, all the magic happens. So let's go ahead and sign in. Um, so as you can see, we're signed in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and look at the projects page. Um, this is a demo Redmine page and anyone can access this on the internet right now so a lot of people have just created kind of demo projects that they've been um, uh, testing out Redmine before they installed on their own infrastructure so we're just going to use this for now for sake of tutorial um, <clears throat> so normally you'd be able to go to any of these projects and just click on them and and look at what they are and see the manager or whatever but in this case we're gonna go ahead and create our own project so here at the top if you look at the green plus mark you can go ahead and click the new project button so when we're at the new project button you can see that there's a new form here um, and everything's pretty intuitive um, I wouldn't say you have to be too uh, project management savvy to really know what you're doing but um, we're going to go ahead and start by creating a name for our project. So I'm just going to call this test project tutorial. We're not going to set it a sub project of anything, but this is kind of uh, nifty if you have like a parenting project and uh, many children projects that you'd like to, to work on or, or uh, project manage. So within the description, I'm just going to say, create Redmine tutorial, blah, blah, blah. The identifier, this is just something that shows up within um, the actual URL. Um, it's just the way that it organizes kind of what's on the server. So we're just going to call it test project. And it's a little picky on making sure that you use all lowercase and that there's no spaces, etc. So the home page, we're just gonna, this is what the uh, actual page will be called. We'll just call it test project. Mm, yeah, test project tutorial. This is nifty. Um, you can decide to set to your project as public. Um, if you do this as public, you do not have to. Um, be a member of the project to view the project. Um, if we unselect public, you, you need to specifically be um, given permissions to view the project page. We're going to just leave ours as public for now. Then down here we have modules. Uh, these are some of the project management artifacts that, that we'll talk about later. Um, so you can decide to either include these modules within your uh, Redmine project page or to not include them. For the sake of the tutorial, we're going to include all of them. Let's just go over them really quick. Issue tracking, uh, we'll go more in depth on this. Uh, wiki page, you can just uh, simply create a wiki page for each project. That way anyone entering the project can simply uh, just uh, kind of study up on what's going on. 
um, time tracking, forums, news, calendar, documents, Gantt chart, files. Um, so we're going to, again, include all of these. And down here we have different types of trackers. Um, uh, I remember mentioning we're going to do issue tracking. So down here are the different uh, types of tracking that we can do. We can do an issue as a bug, an issue as a, merely a feature that we want to include within this project, or support. Now keep in mind that Redmine is... I guess this one's already taken. One, two, three, four. That's definitely not going to be taken. Like I was saying, keep in mind that uh, Redmine is created specifically not just for project management, but for software project management. So a lot of things that we're going to see throughout uh, this tutorial, you'll see are very much geared towards um, supporting software, towards um, creating uh, issues for bugs, issues for features, um, and, and we'll look more into that as the tutorial moves on. So let's go now to our overview page. Now this is like the general kind of home page for the project. Um, as you can see, members here, the members module, there's only one member so far and that's me and they set me automatically as the project manager because I created it. So I think right now is the appropriate time to add members to this project. So we're going to go to settings, this top settings tab. Then within the settings page, uh, down here there are a series of more tabs and we can look at these later, but uh, for now we're just going to click the members. So far, as we saw already on the overviews page, there's only one member. Um, so let's go ahead and add some uh, some more me members, team members to our page. As you can see, let's add uh, Tupac. <laughs> Again, these are just random members that have decided to demo out um, Redmine so far. Okay, so we've added, so far we're going to add these couple members, and we can decide what roles we want to set them as. So I think we're only going to have one manager, that's going to be me. Um, and then let's add the following people that I just selected as developer role. So after loading, we can see that now we have four developers. Um, let's go ahead and add uh, one more person, but let's add them as this time a reporter role. So what Redmine does is each member has a set role, and depending on what your role is, is what's it depends on what kind of permissions you have uh, within the Redmine project page. Let's go back to overview and check that out. Under the members module, we can see that we have one manager, uh, we have four developers, and one reporter. Down here, we can look at issue tracking. So far, we have no issues. So one thing when there's a big company that uses Redmine is that there's not always time to meet with your members um, and kind of catch them up to what's going on within a project. Like let's say a member is added midway through a project and we don't have the time or resources to update them on exactly what's going on on this project. So what we can do is create a wiki page and every time, um, every time something's changed within the project needs or whatever, um, we can just update the wiki page and that way new members can always tell what's going on. So let's just call this Redmine Tutorial. And let's say, let's just do Redmine Features. For this case, we're just gonna do blah, blah. So one thing that's really nice is at this point, um, Again, since this is geared towards towards uh, building software, at this point, if you have a software requirements document that you'd like um, your members of your team to read, especially if they're the, the developers, you can go ahead and add that document here. So let's just, for sake of tutorial, add a random document.
That one's too big. Okay. Let's just save it. So now we have the wiki page um, with some general, very helpful information for the new members, etc. Then we have um, more files included that the members can brush up on. So this is really helpful for, like I said, big projects um, that you don't, you know, maybe might be time constraining. You don't have time to update everyone. You can just refer them to the wiki page. Um, so now that we've added a wiki, let's go ahead and create our first task. Um, first of all, the task in Redmine, they're all called issues. That just means that they can either be bugs, they can be features or support. So far we have no issues. So we're going to go ahead and create a new issue. In this case, it's not going to be a bug. We're just going to create a new feature that we want within our project. Um, so let's say because we're, this project is all about uh, testing out Redmine and, and creating this tutorial. Let's say that our new task is um, screenshot adding or you know, screenshot in documentation. That's what the subject of the feature or the subject of the issue is going to be called. And then for the description, add screenshots to documentation. Um, then down here we can set the status. Uh, let's just set it as new priority. Let's just say this is pretty normal priority. And then we have the choice of ass assigning um, one of the developers or one of the team members this task. So in this case, let's just assign it to myself. We're not going to have any parent task. Start date. Let's just select the start date as today then the due date will have it as tomorrow. This is really cool, the estimated time. Uh, and we'll see later that when you do the estimated time, this actually feeds into the Gantt chart. So let's say estimated time, I'm gonna exaggerate, let's say it's gonna, I estimate it's gonna take three hours for one, for one assignee to uh, complete this project. And then here you can also select to include a file. So um, I'm just gonna include a sample screenshot to get you started. Then down here we have watchers. So say that we want certain members of the team to be updated every time this specific task is updated. If we select them as a watcher, they will actually get emailed every time someone touches this task now. So we're gonna go ahead and after we double check to make sure everything's right, all my ducks are lined up, we're just gonna go ahead and create the, this task. All right, so this task has now been created. And if we go back to the overviews page, we can see that now within issue tracking, there is one new issue under features and it's open. It hasn't been, um, it hasn't been touched yet. Um, so let's go ahead and look at how the Gantt chart has been updated. Prior to adding this task, there's been nothing in the Gantt chart, but now the Gantt chart has uh, set that the test project tutorial will be the amount that this new task is. So it's linked up to the screenshot task that we created earlier. <clears throat> and for now, because it's not complete, it's kind of a different color. We can also check out the calendar and see how it's been updated. So the calendar has also been updated to show this new task that is needed. So let's pretend that I went through and I um, I did the task. I created all the, the screenshots that are needed. Let's pretend that we want to update everyone on um, what's going on and how far we've gone on that task. So we're going to go back to the issues page. And we can see that this issue is now here. Let's click on it. And let's update it. Now normally you would only be able to do this if you have permissions through Redmine to do this. So if you were the assignee or you were the creator of this task, you would be able to do this. If not, then you'd only be able to uh, view this task but not update it. 
So let's say that I completed all the screenshots. So we're going to go down here and say, um, yeah, 100% done. And then down here, we're going to log our time. So the estimated time was three hours. Let's say it actually took me six hours. And this activity was a development because I developed the screenshots or whatever. And I'll say a uh, comment is took longer to screenshot because of pages so intense or something. I don't know. And then down here, I would add, obviously, the screenshots or whatever. And at this point, once I'm sure everything is good, I would click Submit. All right, so now the issue is updated. We can see that it's now listed as 100% done. Time spent on it was six hours. And now the file that I added was here as well. So this part's really cool. Down here is the history, and it shows you anytime everyone, anyone ever touches this issue or adds anything or updates it. So you can see exactly what I did. I added the file, and I changed the percent done from 0 to 100. So once we go back to the overview page, we can see that the feature is still there, but that the uh, time spent is now 6 hours total so far for this project. We can go back to the Gantt chart, and now <clears throat> this this uh, specific feature within the Gantt chart is now colored green because it is complete. So you can tell how this would be very beneficial for large companies that um, have many projects and many developers and many team members within each project that constantly need to be updated and update uh, specific projects and tasks. Um, so I know at my last company we used this and it was very helpful. Um, obviously since it's geared towards software development, um, it, it was awesome for uh, the testers to be able to, like the software testers could now log on and view what the software is supposed to do through the software requirements document and then um, test against that and then if they find any bugs they could go right here and create a new issue saying hey I have a bug within the software um, blah 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 you need to fix this and then you can assign a specific developer to fix that bug um, so all these all these different project management artifacts are definitely helpful to manage large softwares that are that are created or large applications created within a company um, there's a lot to explore within uh, Redmine, and I don't have time to uh, show you all the features or explore everything that Redmine has to offer, but um, hopefully soon I will add another, another tutorial and we can go over some more stuff. Uh, so thank you for watching the tutorial.